It's also, ladies and gentlemen, necessary that you be creative when you're working on your ideas, that you understand the importance of, of changing up, of readjusting your strategies. Many times we can have a great idea, but if you're not advancing it in the right way and things don't happen, you become discouraged and think the idea doesn't work. No, that's not true. It's necessary that we become creative. I remember when I was in New York walking down the street and a guy approached me and said, hey, mister, can I shine your shoes? And I said, no, I'm in a hurry. I don't have time. I kept walking. Someone else said, hey, man, your shoes look cluddy. May I shine your shoes? I said, no, I don't have time. I'm sorry, I'm busy. And I was walking fast and many people solicited me for my business. And then finally, a young man stepped in front of me and he said, excuse me. And he started counting, 97, 98, 99, 100. He said, sir? I said, yes. He said, come here, please. I said, what is it? He said, today is my birthday. And every year, just to thank God for another year of life, the 100th person who passes by shoe shine stand, I offer them a free shoe shine. Would you give me the honors? I said, why, sure. I got up on the shoe shine stand, George, and I sat there, and, and he shined my shoes diligently. And when I got down, I looked at them. They were sparkly. And I was walking away, and I said, thank you. And I stopped. I said, excuse me, but how much do you usually charge? He said, only $2. I said, I tell you what, today's your birthday. Here's five, keep the change. He said, thank you. As I was walking away, looking in the opposite direction of other people coming, he started counting again. 97, 98, 99, 100. <laughs> it's necessary that you be flexible, that you are always thinking of how can I improve this better? This is a customer-driven economy it's necessary for you to always explore various ways in which you can improve the quality of service that you're providing for the people in your organization. I remember something, a major company had talked about the extra value service they were providing for their customers. And the lady who had the news conference summarized it this way. She said, it's not our intention to satisfy our customers or to please our customers. Our intention is to amaze them. It's necessary if you're going to compete today that you look for ways to amaze your customers by being one of those individuals that keep your commitments, that keep your word that's relentless. It's necessary as you work with the people that you bring into your organization that they see that you are a good example of a person to work with because you model integrity and determination and ambition and truth and honesty and the way in which you conduct business. The next step is that is you, that is you, that no one can do it for you but you. And even though you face disappointments, even though you will experience some setbacks, it goes with the territory. You must understand that. I remember I was playing a game with my nine-year-old son, John Leslie, and I beat him 10 straight games in a game called Connect Four. And finally, I said, John Leslie, I'm bored. I don't want to play you anymore. And I got up. I said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. And repeat out to me, please. Let's say to this together. It's not over until I win. John Leslie said, no, you can't go now, Dad. I said, why? He said, it's not over until I win. That was his attitude. We sat down and we played several other games. And finally, after the 11th game, John Leslie won and he got up and he yawned and he said, I'm ready to go to sleep now. And I'm saying to you, what if all of us took that attitude after we face a rejection and a no or we have a meeting and no one shows up or somebody say, you can count on me and they don't come through. What if we have that kind of attitude, the cause repossessed, nobody believes in you, you've lost again and again and again, the lights are cut off, but you're still looking at your dream, reviewing it every day and say to yourself, it's not over until I win. Life will yield to you. Now here's the next step. Repeat after me, please. It's possible. I can live my dream. It's necessary. I work on myself. Surround myself with winners. Become creative. It's me. I've got to make it happen.
It's not over until I win. The next thing that's important to know, yes, it's possible that you can choose your future and direct the course of your life as you run toward your dream. It's necessary that you have goals, that you write those goals down, that you plan, that you think constantly of how you can begin to improve what it is that you're doing. If it's your presentations, if it's your recruiting skills, whatever that is, it's also necessary that you look for ways to always find a way to pull it out when everybody else thinks that you are defeated. That you've got to take personal responsibility to know that in order to become successful, you've got to make it your personal business to do it. If you want another amazing clip of a young Les Brown, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. What I'd like for you to do right now, I want you to think about your dream because I'm in a room full of dreamers. Think about your dream right now. Once you think about it and envision it.